In this chapter, we'll briefly explore some of the animation tools available to us when using Grease Pencil. We'll be creating a simple lightning blast effect. And along the way, we'll learn about keyframes, multi-frame editing, and the dope sheet modes. Open a new blend file using the 2D animation preset. In the world settings, change the default background color to a dark mid-gray. This is so our lightning effect can be seen better. I'm going to use a value of 0.15 or 15% gray. In the scene output settings, set the frame range end to 24 frames. I'll select my grease pencil default object and rename it to Lightning Blast 1. In the object data properties, rename this layer to Sketch and select it. Toggle into Draw Mode. Select the ink pen brush. Make sure that the material is set to Solid Stroke and set its color attribute to white. Now draw out a rough lightning bolt. We can toggle into Edit Mode, enable Proportional Fall Off, then select points to scale, rotate and reposition until we're satisfied with the path that this lightning will follow. Toggle back into Object Mode and add a Length modifier, isolating the influence to the sketch layer. Set the Start to 0 and the End to negative 1. To the right of the End setting, click on this dot here to set a keyframe. The current dope sheet is set to Grease Pencil Mode by default. So keyframes for modifiers won't show up, but if we switch it to Dope Sheet, anything that is keyframed will show up under the summary. Let's go forward two frames and set a keyframe for the start. I'm now going to go forward to frame 20, either by moving the scrubber along the Dope Sheet timeline or by hitting the right arrow until we get to frame 20. Set the end factor to zero. This should keyframe automatically in our dope sheet, revealing the entire stroke. I'm going to go forward two more frames and set the start factor to negative one. If we hit the spacebar and play it through, you should see that our lightning bolt animation is already looking pretty good. And this is just the initial sketch. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at frame by frame animation. Lock off the sketch layer and drop its opacity. Unlock the lines layer and select it. In draw mode, switch your ink pen material to solid fill and increase the simplify setting under stroke post processing. This will make our shapes much more angular. Now arrow or scrub to the first frame that our lightning bolt draws on and roughly trace over the sketch. If you take a look at the dope sheet, under the summary section labeled Stroke, you should see the corresponding layer names and a new keyframe placed on the lines layer. As you progress forward frame by frame, draw out the shape over the sketch. Each keyframe should be added automatically and each shape that you previously drew should disappear as you add a new one. Once you've traced over each frame, hide the sketch layer and play back the animation. This frame by frame lightning is looking really good. But what really makes a lightning bolt look cool are some secondary lines. I like to add a new layer for this. I'll label the layer Secondary Lines. I'll lock off my Lines layer and select this new one. In Draw Mode, I'll switch my ink pen material back to Solid Stroke and reduce its radius. Now at each frame, 
I'll add some additional lines to make this look more electric. These secondary lines should also follow a rough path and this is where onion skinning can help. Onion skin settings can be accessed in your object data properties. Onion skins are available in solid and material preview modes but invisible in render view mode. You can also toggle onion skin visibility in your viewport overlays. So I'll just draw out the rest of these secondary lines frame by frame and now we'll play it back. We'll finish up by adding an initial blast in the first couple of frames. But I want to do this on another drawing plane. In fact, I want to do this in side view. In draw mode, I'm going to set my grease pencil origin to cursor and the drawing plane to view. Under our viewport overlays, let's make our cursor visible. Unlock the lines layer. I'll toggle into edit mode and scrub to a frame where the blast first appears and select a point roughly around where the blast might begin. This doesn't have to be exact. Snap the cursor to selection, then toggle back into draw mode. Let's make an additional layer and call it blast. You may wish to lock off any unused layers. You can do this by selecting the blast layer and use the isolate layer button to lock everything else. Hit numpad 3 to go into side view and draw out a circle with a solid fill. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered, nor does it have to be a perfect circle. On the dope sheet, duplicate this first keyframe and bring it back to frame 1. Make sure your playhead is on frame 1 and in edit mode, Scale the circle down as small as you can, but it doesn't have to be exactly zero. Then hit the up arrow to jump to the next keyframe and go forward a few frames. Now let's scale the circle down to zero. We can do this by selecting all the points, hitting S, then zero. While still in edit mode, place the scrubber between the first and second keyframe for this layer. Go to your Grease Pencil menu and select Interpolate Sequence. This will fill in in between frames for you. You can do the same for between the second and third keyframes. If the timing doesn't look great, you can delete, move and redo this step for keyframes until you get something that you like. Let's swing into 3D View and take a look at our Blast animation. I'm liking where it is, but I want to edit this blast a little further. Now, going back and doing this frame by frame would be tedious, so let's toggle into edit mode and make sure that on the dope sheet, all the keyframes are selected. Unlock all the layers that you wish to edit and enable multi-frame. All the frames should be visible at once and all points for these frames should be editable. I'm going to enable my proportional fall off and begin to move, scale, and rotate some of these points to make a more exaggerated bolt. I'm going to move some of the secondary lines off the plane of the blast. Under proportional fall off, I'm going to tick the box next to connected only. Now when I select a point on one of the secondary lines, only that line or points connected to it will be edited. Now I'll disable my multi-frame once more and toggle back into object mode. I'll hit numpad 0 to look through the camera again and play through my animation once more. I want to give my blast a color and I'll do this with a tint modifier. I'll set the mode to stroke and fill, the strength to 1 and select a color. I might go with this nice orangey yellow. Now, under effects, I'm going to add a glow effect. 
Leave the mode as luminance and make the glow color white. Change the blend mode to add. Increase the sample size to 32 and make the size a little smaller. Remember that effects are only visible in rendered preview mode. As we play through this, we can dynamically change the tint color to anything we like via the tint modifier and the glow will be maintained for whatever color that you choose. Of course, you won't want to have this animating in place. You'll want to use this as an element in an existing animation. So it's probably best to move the point of origin for this grease pencil object to where the blast occurs. Now, if you've moved the cursor by accident, not to worry. Scrub to a frame where the blast is first visible. And in edit mode, select all the points and snap the cursor to selection. Toggle into object mode and snap the object's origin to cursor. Now we can move this element around anywhere, scale it, even rotate it. And because the blast is perpendicular to the bolt, it'll look great in an offset angle. As a final touch, let's add some in-scene lighting. Check that the use light settings is enabled for the layers that you want lit. Now add a point lamp and position it near the blast. I'm going to increase the power and change the color to something closer to what this blast is looking like. I can duplicate this light and move it along the path of this blast. And you can see how the glow effect reacts so well to the in-scene lighting. Now it's over to you. The exercise for this chapter is to create a few more blasts and start to build your very own effects library of blasts that you can add to your own animations.